Let's stand and worship God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength.
Great singing, everybody. Y'all can be seated. Christ, and we welcome you to Spanish Fort United Methodist Church, and happy Pentecost. It is the birthday of the church. It's the day that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and indwelling in God's people for the empowerment to do God's work in the world. And we are those people. A few things I want to address in your order of worship. If you would please look there with me this morning, there's a lot happening. I want to first address what's going on next week. Um, we are having one service next week over the holiday weekend, and that will be at 10 o'clock. So if you show up for 11 o'clock worship, you might catch the last song. Um, so make sure you set your alarm clock appropriately for that next week. Also, uh, we will be dropping um, the mask requirement next week, and um, they are still suggested. And please continue to space yourselves accordingly, but they will not be mandated next week week. Today, if you will look on your order of worship, there are lots of things that have the big capital letters today, 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 today. And um, Jennifer is going to be busy today, today, today. Sweet Tea Sundays is happening, and that already happened. <laughs> We're excited that that happened already. Um, there's going to be a couple other things happening today with Children's Ministries, uh, end of school blast from 2 to 4, end of school swim party from 4 to 7, and today the 8th um, graders are being welcomed into Remedy at youth group. So if you have an 8th grader, um, bring them this evening to youth group. So that's all I have to say for today, but there are, more, there are more things here for you to look at, keep this, take it home with you, put it somewhere where it can remind you how you can get involved as you are filled with the Holy Spirit to do so. I'm going to invite you now to stand back up. Uh, we begin each worship service by affirming our faith, and we do that with the Apostles' Creed so you can find the words on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Something that I often forget about the way that God works is that when I'm weak, He is strong. And regarding the Holy Spirit, it's just to recognize that not by power, not by our own might, but our resignation to God working in our lives. That's what we're going to sing about. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It goes like this. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Just sing that again. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. One more time. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Here we go. Oh, my God.
I pray, I just want to share a couple of things with you. First, it's great to see you on this Pentecost Sunday. And for those of you who have ordered shirts today for our anniversary, thank you for doing that and supporting missions. And there are shirts in the narthex if you need to pick those up today. just want to make you aware of that. And thank you for your support in that as well on this glorious day. Also, I have some difficult news to share regarding our program staff. Many of you may have heard word, but Beth Allen, uh, who currently serves as our director of congregational life, is going to be stepping away from her staff position, and her last official Sunday is going to be on July the 4th. Uh, Beth has been uh, discerning and praying about direction in her life, and she's going back to her former position She's a genetic counselor at Sacred Heart Hospital, so she'll be going back doing that in July. She served faithfully here in different capacities since 2009, and we will greatly miss Beth. But there is some good news in the midst of this. Beth is not leaving our church entirely. Uh, She desires to continue and will still help lead the Agape Hands Puppet Ministry and do other ministries as she's able to do so as a volunteer. Uh, And we are certainly in prayer for Beth and transitions that she's going to be going through. And I know we will have a formal, more formal reception for her later as we get closer to her last Sunday on staff on July the 4th. But please be praying for Beth as she makes these transitions and also for our church as we take the next steps and prayerfully consider staffing needs here in the life of our church. Will you join me now as we go to God in prayer? Lord, we pray on this Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit come and fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Lord, let us truly hear heaven's song today. Let us be renewed, God, by what we experience in this place. We pray that Pentecost, Lord, would indeed be revisited through your church and the fresh wind of your spirit would blow upon us today even today as we share as we worship and as we give to you our praise and our thanks thank you lord for the holy spirit that comes to abide with us and in us now and always and for your holy spirit that brings the person and presence of jesus throughout our world god we thank you for that We pray, God, you'd receive our praise and thanks and all of the requests that are upon our hearts today. We yield them to you. And, Lord, we pray this prayer, all our prayers, in the name of Jesus, the one who's taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to invite the children to come down front with me. We're going to sit over here on this side, away from the fire today. We're going to have a seat right here. goodness good morning how are y'all good okay who knows what today is it's a big day Sunday yes it is Sunday but today is Pentecost that's a big word isn't it Pentecost and that is the church's birthday it's the day that the Holy Spirit came down and filled each of the believers right so on a birthday what do you do do you sing happy birthday you think we can sing happy birthday to this church Are you ready? One, two, three, let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Yes, awesome. So today is the day that the church, it's birthday, right? And we have been in ministry for 60 years. That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, 
We just thank you for all of these precious children who are here to worship with us today. We thank you for their enthusiasm for you. Be with us as we go from this place and help us to return safely. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's give it up for our kids, everybody. Hooray. We have a special treat this morning. Um, I don't know how many of y'all know personally Paul Brammer, who plays bass for us, but he, we've been playing here together off and on for 20 years together. Give him a round of applause for his service for years and years. Um, I, I, have a, I have a recording studio, and he said he wanted to do an album, and he came in one time, and the, I'd never heard him sing. I just heard him play the bass. And I put a chair and a microphone on him and not knowing what was going to come out. And it was just like my face was peeled back from the tip of my nose. It was just, wah, he's wonderful. And this song from the album really made me think about uh, celebrating Pentecost. So give it up for Paul Brammer, everyone. much, Andy. He's taller than I am. You ever noticed? <laughs> well, maybe I'm shorter than he <clears throat> is. Right. Y'all ready? You could have heard the blood so nail drop.
us all of you. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Amen. We can do that after the sermon next time, okay? <laughs> That's good. That's good. Let me invite you to stand for the reading of God's holy word. Hmm. So this is Acts chapter 2. This is Pentecost Sunday. And yes, the party has begun. Thanks be to God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language or the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said... They are filled with new wine. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You can be seated. So today we come to the culmination of our, this, our story series as we celebrate this Pentecost Sunday. And we started this out by sharing how our story, Spanish Fort United Methodist Church, began in 1961. And through the past several Sundays, we have traced through the decades to where we are today. And it's been great to hear the testimonies of those who've spoken and have been a part of our church's history and our church's story beginning from 1961 to where we are now. And to see how God is continuing to direct our church. And also, as that goes forward, we pray even into the boundless future as God wills it and directs it. I mentioned from the outset... If you remember that as we started this series, our story, our church's story, it's held within the larger backdrop of the church's story. Remember we say it, the larger church's story, the universal church. We said it today in our creed as we say it every Sunday, I believe in the holy Catholic church. And again, people will misunderstand that in some regards, but Catholic means universal or general. We're saying we believe the church, our church, fits into the larger, bigger picture of the church throughout the world. Our local church is a part of the church universal. It encompasses the whole world as Jesus died for the whole world. So we're celebrating the culmination of this series, bringing us into 2021, but also celebrating what began at Pentecost with the birth of the church to where we are today. And as we look at this day, certainly there are many things in this story that we could point to that are very significant. I want to point out three things that I see that I think are very important and also things that apply to where we are today that we can draw out of what was happening in this experience of Pentecost and how our story is still within this story of what God is doing through His church. So the first thing that I wanted to point to is the believers here were expectantly waiting. And I mentioned this last week, but it bears repeating today on this Pentecost Sunday. Jesus gave them some very specific instructions about what they were to do. And one of those words, the key word was wait. In Acts chapter 1, the previous chapter this is Acts 1, 4, he says, on, uh, the, the word says, On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. Wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And in Luke's gospel, near the end of the gospel, in 24, 49, similar word, he says, I'm going to send what my father has promised, but stay or wait in the city 
until you have been clothed with power from on high. They were expectantly waiting because of the instruction of Jesus. Now, I've discovered just by observation, and I've sometimes been nicknamed Reverend Obvious, but I think as just by observation, for the most part, we do not like to wait. Often we grow very impatient, even angry or frustrated when we have to wait for nearly anything. Notice here that Jesus also did not give them a period or date or time of duration that they were going to be waiting. In our culture especially, we have our smartphones, cell phones, calendars built into them. We're clock watchers, date setters. We live in a very instamatic world where we push buttons and flip levers and things happen. Flip a switch, electricity comes on. We push a button or turn a key, our car comes on. And, and certainly in waiting periods, the famous questions when we're traveling, are we there yet? How long, oh Lord, is this going to take? When is this going to happen? And I'm confident, although it's not recorded in the scriptures, but I would almost bet that there were some conversations going on in that upper room Concerning that, although there was no real answers, they were wondering how long they were going to be waiting, how long they were going to have to be in anticipation before this promise happened, before the Spirit came. So Jesus just told them to wait until, (laughs) wait until, until the Spirit comes. But what do we find here also is what they were doing while they were waiting. And I think this is very significant. It's very clear in the scriptures that they weren't just waiting, twiddling their thumbs here, but they were waiting with expectancy, as I mentioned. In Acts 1.14, here's what it says they were doing. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. Together with certain women including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Scripture says they were all in one place, in one accord, and they were devoting themselves to praying. This tells me that they were not just waiting, but they were yearning. There was a deep longing within them, a great expectation of what Jesus had promised and what was going to happen. Although they didn't know the specifics of it, the details of it, there was a yearning within them to be visited by the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 40 says, Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. That word is often translated, They that hope in the Lord. It's interesting how those words are similar and can be translated the same way. But what you have here is a waiting and hopeful expectation. These believers were praying and waiting in hopeful expectation for the coming of the Holy Spirit. There was a fervency and a passion about what they were doing, waiting for the Spirit to come. They were fully expecting what God would do, that God would show up in some way, and they did not want to miss it. A question that I have here, and certainly draws into my own mind, and and as I bring to you today, is there a great sense of expectancy in our worship of God? Or are we only perhaps going through some motions of a sense of duty and obligation as to why we are here? Is there a sense of great expectation that God will show up, that God will be present? And as we'll talk about in just a moment, that we will experience the fullness of God. And really that is the other aspect of this. Expectant waiting is the first part of this. The second one is they were experiencing God in God's fullness. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Very often I find that we can get distracted or preoccupied and fail to see God or to recognize God, much less be filled with the fullness of God. There was an incident in the Old Testament in chapter 28 of the book of Genesis. Jacob, our spiritual forefather, had a dream. And he saw a ladder Most of us are certainly familiar with this story. He saw a ladder come from heaven, and there were angels ascending and descending on that ladder. 
And God spoke to him and promised that he would inherit the land. And God further told him that through him all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Similar falling in line of this covenant back to Abraham. And here's what Jacob says. And I think we as humans can often identify with this. Here's what he said. God was in this place and I didn't even know it. God was here and I didn't even know it. I didn't have eyes to see it or faith to see it. Recall a a more personal incident in my life. Our daughter, Jamie, was 15 years old at the time, or thereabout, in a previous appointment. It was in January. It was about 14 degrees outside. I mean, it was a cold night, particularly for South Alabama. And as I was walking through the parsonage, And I looked out the patio window, and I saw her out there in a chair. And I'm thinking, it's 14 degrees outside, and she's out there in a chair. And so I'm thinking, something must be wrong. So I I go out, I stick my head out the window, or the door, stick my head out the door because it's 14 degrees outside. And I'm saying, child, it's 14 degrees out here. You're out here. What's wrong? Is something wrong? And she said, Dad, Dad, look at the stars. It's absolutely beautiful out here. And I looked up and saw them. It's magnificent. On this cold, crisp night, Heavens declare the glory of the Lord, and it was spectacular. And I was missing it. So you know what I did? Went back and got a chair and got a blanket and went out there and sat beside of her. Just because she was my daughter and I loved her. Yes. But in that moment, there was some true worship happening. And I wanted to be involved with it. That brought another question to my mind. Is what we are experiencing so good that we want others to join in? Or that others would want to join in? The believers, what they were experiencing, there was a sense of contagiousness in this experience. They were... In this event, experiencing the fullness of God. Now, I know what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit has a lot of different connotations and meanings in our world. Verse 4 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability What this seems to mean is that there was a real miracle taking place here that people who actually spoke other known languages as Jews from all over the world, it says, were gathered here for this harvest festival of Pentecost. But something supernatural was happening here in that the people that were from these different regions could hear and understand what the other people were saying. So there was a miracle of speaking and hearing here. We do believe that there is a gift of speaking in tongues. Paul talks about that later, particularly in the book of Corinthians. But what happens here seems to be that the fullness of God created an ability to hear and understand and a communication of one another from these different parts of the world. And how amazingly God would use this experience to spread that back out into the world from what they were experiencing the fullness of God here at Pentecost. Yes, the party was beginning. So the fullness of God and what that means as we look at this, certainly supernatural things were happening here. But I want you to notice the most important part of this, I think, is that the Holy Spirit came upon each person. The Holy Spirit is coming now to indwell every believer This is further explained later in this same chapter by Peter in his sermon where he says from the prophet Joel that God is 
pouring out his spirit on all flesh. It is that the spirit is coming now to feel, to feel and indwell every believer. Since I have come to Spanish Fort Church, I've come to this sanctuary very frequently to pray, as others have as well. My prayer is that this would be not just a house of God, but it would truly be a house of God. That God's presence would be in this place. That God's presence would be real, would be evident, would be experienced in dynamic ways. As Isaiah the prophet spoke in chapter 6, we see the Lord high and lifted up. And his glory fill, fill the place. We still pray for that to happen. But when we come to worship, we recognize that each of us are indwelt by the Spirit. And that profoundly affects our worship, or it should profoundly affect our worship. Worship literally means the work of the people. I've often heard people say when they come to worship, they want to get their spiritual batteries charged. Or they want to be fed. Or they want to receive something from the service. And I think that is good and noble. But I would suggest something else. Something more. I would suggest that we come not primarily to get our batteries charged, although I hope that happens. But it's more of giving off a charge. Giving off a charge in our praise. Giving off a charge in our prayers. Giving off a charge in our offerings, in our singing, where we're all participating and experiencing the fullness of God. As each person is the temple of the Holy Spirit, it means that I'm bringing the Holy Spirit with me into worship. You're bringing the Holy Spirit with you into worship as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And as we come and each of us are bringing the Holy Spirit with us in this place... There is a fullness of God's Spirit unlike anywhere else or any other event we might go to. That we're giving off a charge to each other. That in this fellowship that we share, in this worship that we share, the word that we speak to one another might be the very word we need to hear that day. Where someone might be saying to us, in a genuine way, I'm praying for you. I'm praying encouragement for you. That someone might say to someone else in a genuine way, where they may receive a word of the Lord to speak to someone else in this place, and maybe not even know that, the impact that it's going to have on the other person. But each person is indwelt by the Spirit as we come to worship. And experience the fullness of God. And this is what it says here in verse 3. It says, Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. Each person was a flame, alive, filled, energized by the Holy Spirit. I couldn't help but think a moment ago, as the children were here, and we were telling them, For safety reasons, don't get close to the flame. I couldn't think, I had to think in that moment, almost it's ironic. Certainly for safety reasons, that's the case. But when it comes to the flame of the Spirit, I wonder... If in our minds we might be saying, don't get too close to the flame. It says, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. This involved everyone in the place. Last thing I want to share with you here that I see is so applicable is that they served with enthusiasm. Notice what it reads here. Verse 7, they were amazed and astonished. 
Verse 12, they were amazed and perplexed. 13, verse 13, people thought they were filled with new wine. I've often wondered what people might think when, whenever we leave the church and go back to our houses and neighborhoods and the community. There's a friend, a clergy friend of mine on Facebook. He wrote, this was a couple of years ago. He says, it's loud, it's noisy around the house. Can't sleep in. Oh, great day. It's game day. Woo! And I wrote back. And I said, friend, it sounds like Pentecost Sunday to me. Dr. George Morris, who was the former professor at Candler School of Theology and evangelism chair there, he said he went to Brazil to preach on Easter Sunday morning. And his first words as he was speaking, as they traditionally are, was, The Lord is risen! And he said the whole place just erupted. People talking and singing and shouting. And he said it was like 15 minutes later after that that he was able to actually begin his sermon. I said, wow. There was tremendous energy, enthusiasm about what was happening here among the believers. Peter, again in his sermon, explaining what was happening when they were wondering what in the world is going on here with this. In his sermon, he spoke, told them how, yes, as the prophet Joel says, God's pouring out his spirit on everyone. And then he comes right back and saying that God has made Jesus both Lord and Savior. And the people ask, what shall we do? What shall we do in light of all that's happening? He says, of course, repent, believe, and you'll receive the Holy Spirit. But the energizing work of the Spirit was here in that their hearts were pricked to action. Your sons and daughters, your old men, women, everybody's included in this, both young and old. And I believe God wants that to operate the same way today. I think God is still pouring out His Spirit upon the church. And that's why we're saying that Pentecost is our story because we are still living out that story of the church today as people who are waiting expectantly as people who are experiencing the fullness of God being filled with the spirit where we are as people who are led by the spirit to serve with joy and enthusiasm in our world Pentecost is not just about what happened in Acts chapter 2 it's not just what's in history but it continues to make history. It's not just about those 120 believers who were there that day who heard and experienced this. It's not just those people who were in the upper room, but it's about the people who are in this room. And how God, through His Spirit, is still continuing the story of the church. Pentecost is our story as we are the church, as we continue to go forward as the people of God. So here are these three things I have pointed out today. To wait expectantly and prayerfully. To experience God in God's fullness. To be filled with His Spirit. And to be led by the Spirit to serve with enthusiasm as we go forward. As I close this time today, I would open the altar. The altar is always open for you. 
But I would simply open the altar today for whatever need you might have in your life. But perhaps on this Pentecost Sunday, where you might just be praying out to God and saying, God, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want to be filled with your spirit. I want to be filled with your fullness, God, so that I can serve joyfully and with enthusiasm because the party has begun. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. The altar is open for prayer.
go forth today. I pray that you go forth as spirit-filled believers who, as Paul said, are be being filled. It's the way it translates. It's not a one and done thing. We're leaky Christians and we need to be continually filled by the spirit in order to be empowered by the spirit in order to do the mission and work of Jesus who sent us the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth so that the world knows that we indeed are different. Let us go forth and speak different languages. For some of you that might mean being a peacemaker. For some of you that might mean dealing with injustices. And for some of you that might mean showing up on Sunday morning like it's game day. Hallelujah. Go and be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Father who sent the Son, who sent the Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everybody.